Hello again. You must be hungry. I hope this still hurts. All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of What's Your Story with me, JR, and the fourth corner herself, Lexi. Hey. Now, this week, Lexi decided what movie we are going to review. And Lexi, let everybody know what we're going to talk about this week on What's Your Story. Hey, horror fiends. Yes, on What's Your Story, we're going to do a Mike Flanagan 2013 film called Oculus. Um, It is about a brother and sister that must face the antique curse mirror that took the lives of their parents when they were younger. The seemingly harmless reflections contain a malevolent supernatural force that infects the mind of anyone who gazes into it. And the truth comes out um, when the siblings are caught up in the mirror's evil spirits. So. Sounds spooky. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when you hear a typical mirror, kind of confusing haunted mirror, that sounds kind of stupid. But is it? Or is there a great twist? We'll find out. Interesting. I am definitely interested in what you think, though, JR, since I picked this one. So what were your first impressions? And what did you think of the film? Um, overall, I thought it was a pretty good film i mean it definitely hooks you right from the beginning uh you get a traumatic scene happen and then you get the recanting of one of the siblings tim who you know is in a psychiatric hospital and then you get to meet his sister kaylee who has this plan in mind of getting revenge on a basically a piece of furniture which uh it, it ends up being a very interesting movie with a lot of twists and turns and the fact is one of the good things about horror is when you return to the scene of a crime that impacted your childhood on top of that you bring an item like this it actually makes for a very very interesting fun-filled intense movie mm-hmm. i mean what do you th- well, you watched it before so what's your impression is watching it once again so these um happens to be one of my favorite movies um not a top 10 movie but one of my favorites that i like to fall asleep to and when i say fall asleep that i'm not saying sleep on it um i mean actually maybe i'm demented (laughs) but i like listening to this movie in the background and then fall asleep but um maybe it's comforting i don't know (laughs) but uh overall the um first impressions uh we've been watching slow burns lately right so this one starts with action right off the bat. And I like that because it went into it very well from uh, the characters, Tim and Kaylee from childhood to now adulthood. And um, so we'll get into those characters in a minute, but overall my first impressions, I love this movie. So I'm glad uh, I'm interested in to hear on how you feel about it. Uh, Truth be told, like, you know, this is definitely the first time I watched that. I did two watches on this. The first one I just watched through. I was like, wow, okay, this is impressive. And the second one I watched it, you know, just to look at certain things we were going to talk about. And you mentioned the siblings, um, Tim and Kaylee. Now, these are two siblings that had to basically grow up in two different ways. One in a psychiatric hospital and the other one in foster care. So when they're finally old enough and they start working together to this plan that she brings in. I mean, do you think the siblings actually work pretty good together as far as, you know, throughout the rest of the film? And 
out of the siblings, which one did you like the most? A healthy adult who represents no danger to himself or anyone else. And I believe he should be discharged. Hey, little brother. I found it. What do you mean? We only have a few days. A few days for what? To keep our promise and kill it. Yeah, the siblings definitely work together from the scenes we saw them as children to the time they wake, uh, are rejoined and reunited, basically, to work together as a team, as adults. Um, I think the sister was definitely the better character. Um, she was the stronger character um, from beginning to end as a child to into adulthood. Because like you mentioned before, they grew up differently um, because of what happened in the traumatic um you know, torment as kids when the, Tim, the brother, grew up in it because they got separated. Um, he grew up in the mental facility and she grew up in foster care. So she had to fight her whole life. So she was in that fight mode the entire time from beginning to end, whereas he's trying to find uh, logical ways, same way as ghost hunter people would um, debunk things if they see ghosts or think the place is haunted. He's trying to find logical debunctions throughout the whole movie. And um, so I, together, they worked well. Separately, uh, Kaylee is the better character. Yeah. And the, um, I, I liked it, the, the whole dynamic between the two. I mean, because the minute he got out of the psychiatric hospital, she was there waiting for him. And right off the bat, she hits him with the plan. I, I got the mirror. You know, we're going to go back to the house and, you know, remember, we're going to destroy it. So he was almost like, like shocked by this because he was ready to move on. He was ready just to get out, move on with his life. So when they go back into the house, right from the get go, you get that clash where you get him trying to debunk everything, everything he was taught and and to, to deal with his issues in the hospital, he was throwing it on her. Mm -hmm why she's basically she just wants to destroy this mirror because it's this mirror in her mind that brought this traumatic experience to their to them when they were younger now traumatic experience spoiler what ends up happening is this mirror has a mind of its own and tends to go into the minds of others and later on we find out that basically tim's dad killed the mom Tim in defense, killed the dad. So that's a traumatic experience. Now, dad, this experience is going to carry the weight of the, throughout the whole movie. Mm -hmm. So going back to the siblings, yes, um, you had the clash between both of them. You had Tim that thought his father was a murderer, where Kaylee thought it wasn't the father. It was something else, which you see her. She's not looking at her reflection. She's trying to find out what the hell is in that mirror. <laughs> but this is the clash you get throughout the beginning of the film towards the ending of the film um as far as strong character yes kaylee kaylee is played by karen jillian who plays nebula in the guardians of the galaxy movies mm -hmm. and she was in jumanji and she's always plays a badass yeah but yeah her character was very strong um her scenes were very intense um there was a scene where she started going through all the victims and naming them and her face was intense and she was so hell bent on destroying this thing no matter what whereas tim was hell bent of just starting his life right and that was yes. the strong point of kaylee was uh her like i said she had to fight her whole life to basically get to where she you know they are now but uh she in the meantime looked up the entire history going back into the 19th or no i'm sorry the 1700s the origin of the Lasser Glass is unknown, so I can't provide a complete history, but the trail starts in London in 1754. Philip Lasser, the 17th Earl of Leicester, acquired the mirror and hung it over his fireplace. So in 1755, Philip Lasser was found at their grand fireplace, burned beyond recognition. While his estate was dismantled and scattered throughout southern England, one of the family's stewards claimed to see Philip reflected in the mirror. An allegation apparently taken seriously enough to warn a church investigation into the house. And she's going through 45 different scenarios of all the victims that are, is are they stuck in the mirror or they were killed by the mirror? We'll get more deeper into that. But um, yeah, she goes into the history. I love that she did her history. And that's what the turning point for me was. I was like, oh, okay, this girl's a bad bitch. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, and she had this whole thing plot and planned. I mean, she went all in on this. And I mean, she had to think about the cameras and where to position the anchor. Like room she temperatures. How we need to eat. Yeah, the room temperature. She had to think this whole plan out. And then her brother was the, you know, final puzzle to bring in. I'm expecting regular calls from my fiance, Michael Dumont. I told him I'm nervous to be spending time with my recently unincarcerated brother with instructions to notify wow. the authorities immediately if I do not answer the phone. In the room. Which Tim was great in his own way. Um, we'll get into, you know, our rating on him. But uh, he, 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 he was an important piece from childhood. He's, he's, you know, they had to put on their brave face, right? That's what they said throughout the movie. Oh, definitely. But he... He, like I said, tried to get logical explanation until the cameras faced each other. And then he realized, uh, yeah, my sister's right. Because when they replayed it back on the computer, it showed that they put the cameras towards each other. And she's like, do you remember that? <laughs> and he couldn't even answer the question because he knows dang well they didn't do that. And so um, we'll definitely find out what made them do that. That, that was actually a very cool scene. That that was a turning point of the film. So we are talking about the siblings, but other two important characters are the parents. So do you think they were relevant to the story? How do you think they fit in? Well, what I like about this film is I'm not a big fan of flashbacks. And if done right, they work perfectly in this film. Now, the parents in this film, they were only around during the flashbacks. A couple parts later in the film, which we'll talk about towards the ending, but... Each scene that there was part of a flashback was a vital part to the building the storyline of what happened to these kids. Um, the father, you know, you had you watch them slowly succumb to whatever is is in this mirror, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you had the mother who basically thought that the father was having an affair because the siblings saw, you know, a woman in his office, and then she started going, you know, to a little bit crazy because of the fact that I want to say crazy. I would say she was distraught because of the fact that she thought her husband was having an affair. He's become a totally changed person being locked in his office most of the time. And then when she finally confronts the mirror, mirror kind of fights back and takes over her for a little bit. And then from there, the movie just takes a, a bunch of twists and turns that are actually, you know, pretty cool. I mean, what did you think about the parents? Well, like you said, the flashbacks are not a big suit in my eyes either, but each flashback worked perfectly. Uh, you you needed those for it to fit. Uh, the parents were definitely um, a strong suit, both of them. Um, the mother especially, you know, you do feel for her. She's distraught thinking there's adultery going on um, when in fact, because uh, the kids seeing another woman in the office but in fact uh like the scene with the father um the kids peek into the door and you see that there's a the other woman which her name's mary soul and we'll get into her in a minute but uh she's kind of hunched over him and almost controlling almost it looked like daddy and so you can tell the other woman isn't uh adultery at all <laughs> yeah they're both strong and i like that um the the flashbacks with the parents and them as kids to now tim and kaylee today basically uh the flashbacks work perfectly and sometimes the flashbacks were intertwined together so you would see adult tim go up the stairs and then baby tim go or not baby tim but younger tim go down the stairs um so they intertwined the flashbacks at times and i liked that because you know, you didn't know what was real, what was fake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, well I about that too. More into that. <laughs> yeah, you got you got the best of the past and present. I mean, I mm -hmm. think that was a very that was a very strong point in this movie. The way they were able to do that and get away with doing it. There was a scene where the mother's chasing them as kids, and then they go into the closet, and then they're adults, and then they go back to. Then when the door opens, they finally get out. They go back to kids. And this is the scene where the mother was chasing after the kids. The father, it wasn't him, not in his right state of mind. 
basically shot the mom three times, two or three times. Yeah. And then that's where he turns the gun to Kaylee, and then, then that's where uh, Tim basically kills dad. But yeah, I mean, the, the those flashback scenes, I, I loved a lot. I thought that was very well done. It kept the parents in the film when they needed to be kept in the film. It wasn't overdone. No, it wasn't overdone at all. And now you mentioned this glass mirror behind us. I mean, do you think this is like another character in the film? And if so, how do you think it played in the story? Now, there again, there's four characters, the parents, the siblings. But this mirror, you know, you typically think, oh, haunted mirror, that sounds stupid. It was definitely relevant in this movie. Like, it's definitely another character. If you watch the film, this mirror is a character. And the evil spirit in it is Marisol. This is the other woman that we mentioned. The so fought adulteried <laughs> um, other woman that the mother thought. And you feel for mom, but the the mirror does play a strong suit in the movie. Um, from the history that Kaylee, Kaylee gives us in the beginning of the movie to um, Mary Saul making her presence throughout the movie and then, you know, trying to smash it. But um, it's definitely a strong mirror. And I like that the mirror, Mary Saul, um, however you want to address it, uh, takes the minds, it, it, like I said in the beginning, it, it affects the minds of whoever gazes into it. You see throughout the movie, the father is leaned up against it. You see the mother looking into it. And I'm kind of dressed up like the mother. I tried to. <laughs> if you see, she's in the nightgown. She has her glass of wines talking to the kids. But you, and you can see from the kids looking, you know, there's been moments where the kids look into it because, you know, the daughter, younger uh, Kaylee, sees the mother looking into it yeah. intensely and so there's been moments um you just don't know what's real or fake and i liked that it played the minds of all of them and you get moments where okay was that part real you know especially the part where there's broken glass um kaylee uh, older kaylee's coming down the stairs she sees broken glass but she notices the plate was the plate that her mother's eating off of a oh, when yeah. she was younger God knows what that was. Was it beef stew or thrown up beef stew? I don't know what it was. It was gross. But uh, but you see older Kaylee run into a dead plant and it breaks the pot. And so when she's coming down the stairs, you see that she, what she thinks is the, <laughs> the broken plate from her past. And yeah. so she picks up a shard. And well, she there was times she had to bring out her phone to see what was real was fake. Because you get the invisibility of the plate not being there from her past. And uh, someone comes up behind her. She turns around and takes the shard into the person's neck. And it's her fiance. And she has to figure out, like, was that real? This isn't real. He just, and then, you know, the phone calls. And, yeah, you have to watch it. You have to really keep up with it to figure out, you know, what's real, what's fake. But that part was heartbreaking um, with killing the fiance. So I liked that Mary Soul slash Mirror antique mirror the lazarus glass uh definitely mind foxy the whole time <laughs> yeah there's even the scene where she's setting up the cameras and she starts talking about you know the 45 victims and then she mentions how one had a uh was an australian shepherd mm -hmm. a dog that also you see a dog <laughs> walk across Yeah, and there's that there was that scene I thought was interesting. There was a scene where now I don't know if Tim was really in the kitchen changing the light bulb, mm. but she was eating an apple and she put the apple down, and then right next to the apple is the light bulb. She reaches for the apple and realizes she had the light bulb and she crunches on the light bulb, which she had she's taking out a piece of glass right out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the, the way the mirror played with the minds was was really really well done. Um, there was that scene. There was a scene where they would go outside, and even in the house, if you use the phone, the mirror could actually possess the the, the phone. phone calls. <laughs> yeah, the phone calls, which was you know, they went outside and they were like, you know, we need you to come here, and oh, you have to call your father. Or, yeah, yeah your father I like that because it was and, the past phone call when they were younger. 
Yes. I mean, yeah, the, the, the mirror definitely plays a good factor. The Marisol character is she looks really well done. Um, there was a little scene too when you mentioned when she's sitting in the dinner table with the kids, mm-hmm. and she asks about the, you know, the girl, the woman who's you know, was in the, the office with her father, and the little boy goes, "Oh, I think she lives there." I mean, I thought that was a good twist because after mm-hmm. that is when she goes into the office and kind of goes goes crazy in there and then gets possessed. And I liked how they answered that because it wasn't, oh, yeah, we saw her with another woman. No, I think she just lives there. Yeah. <laughs> That's an odd answer. But she and took the, it as an affair. <laughs> yes. But it's funny because she lives in there, but she's never there. Yeah. Which I thought it was a good twist, too, because, you know, the mother goes looking and that's where she finds him writing her name like a million times. Mm-hmm. And quick, quick thing about the mirror is, uh, do you know in the beginning of the movie... Whose estate they bought the mirror from? No. <laughs> I right. missed that part. So if you're a fan of WWE, WWE actually produced this film. And the mirror was brought from the Levesque estate, which happens to be Triple H's real last name. So oh. they kind of gave him a little kudo in the film, which kind of kind of messed up because they bought it off of them and then they went through this shit. <laughs> That's but, awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I seen the article. I was like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. Cause I, when I was watching the movie, I read the, it's like, oh, the best. That sounds so familiar. I researched it. Like, all right, okay, so that, that is pretty cool. Triple H is one of my favorite wrestlers. That's crazy. That's awesome. Nice little Easter egg. No, definitely. So here we go. Now, you recommended this film. I would like to know what are your. I mean, what's your final thoughts on this film? Overall, I think it's a great film. Um, I've watched it many times. Uh, it's one of my, maybe I'm demented, but <laughs> I like to fall asleep to it, have it on in the background and just fall asleep. But uh, it's an overall great film. Now, my con, my knockoff is uh, the ending. Unfortunately, uh, spoiler, uh, Kaylee dies, unfortunately, which the best character dies. But the brother um, survives, and he's arrested of all things. The I guess the what the call finally goes through and yeah. gets arrested. So uh, why make him survive? I don't know. But let's get into that one. What do you think? Your overall? Um, I thought it was a very cool movie. Um, one thing I did not mention yeah is i'm a sucker for lighting in movies and the lighting of this movie was beautifully done i just love the cinematography the lighting was so good um yeah i mean i i I, my biggest con of this film is right in the ceiling is this anchor that she mentions about five times throughout the film which you knew was going to play a factor in somebody's death and lo and behold the way she's standing there is the way she dies because Tim decides I'm going to destroy the mirror sets off the timer and basically kills his sister but before that do you remember how she got dragged to the mirror right by her mother um, who was already in the mirror so in Tim's defense honestly because you know the mind is being played on by Mary saw the mirror um, he doesn't see that his sister's there and I felt for him, but, you know, he, he, he just wants it done and over with. He's ready to smash this damn thing. Yeah. And unfortunately, because of the intertwining of the flashbacks, um, younger Kaylee is being, you know, dragged towards the mirror, basically, or lured into the mirror, not into the mirror, but lured towards the mirror by the mother. And you can kind of see Kaylee in the mirror a little bit. And then, you know, adult Tim, you know, he pulls the anchor trigger and boom. And then he realizes, oh, Kaylee, adult Kaylee is standing there in the way and ends up dying. But yeah, that's yeah. my main main con. I mean, I, I just it was once you hear it twice, you know, it's going to play 
somebody's dying with it right. which they kind of did overkill on it mm-hmm. and i mean the thing too is like um i mean i know you were you weren't happy with the ending what would you have changed differently um the ending for me is just like why allow him to survive um there could have been alternatives i feel uh with the ending um I get why it ended that way. I totally get it. You know, it's the same way how it ended in their childhood. They got separated and now they're separated again, except she's dead. And I think, I guess, stuck in the mirror, you see a moment in the movie where all 45 of the victims are standing behind the father who's pointing the gun at his kids. So it's like, they're all, and now Kaylee, you see, you know, he's getting arrested. He's getting pulled to the patrol car. He looks back and he sees his parents and now his sister all, you know, stuck in the house uh, through the window. And so I get the ending. I totally get it. But there could have been, it could have ended differently, I feel. I wanted more for the ending. Um, What do you think that and how it should have ended? See, this is one of these movies where, one, I'm kind of happy that the bad guy kind of won, which Marisol won. Fortunately, cost her her life. But yeah. I feel like both siblings should have just gotten killed. I mean, they went there to try to find out what happened to their parents or get all these questions to have answered. And I think it would have been better off if they would have just died and been stuck in the mirror with mom and dad. Because... Right you give them peace but at the same time they're going to be tormented because they're stuck and right. for eternity basically and so somebody destroys this mirror but i think i would have went that route and if mike flanagan if you're going to make a sequel to this don't <laughs> start from this point at the end of this film backtrack go to the history of the mirror to give start with robert Lazar. <laughs> yeah yeah give a bigger storyline you don't have to go all the way back to whoever created the mirror go yeah go from Lasser and go on from there yeah. and show show what he, he went through. passed on <laughs> yeah how was it that the mirror was named after him right you know? right i mean That's you could do a massive storyline with that yeah all right here we do things differently if you, you don't remember from last episode so when we do a uh rating we do it storyline characters and then the overall scoring of the movie so first thought is what's your rating as far as the storyline of this film overall i definitely give it a four uh out of five uh it's again one of my fall sleep two movies uh it's really well played it all fits together from them being how they grew up as children how they were separated how they grew up and then you know how they work together as adults um there were times where you know we had Kaylee in a moment of she was kind of leaning towards Tim's, you know, debunction ideas. But uh, overall, I think they film work together, for, especially with the flashbacks. Like we mentioned uh, before, we don't really care for flashbacks, but this one worked so well. Um, you needed those flashbacks. And, uh, and I loved how they beautifully intertwined them. Uh, there was moments where, it wasn't flashbacks. It was happening. I want to say on site, you would yeah. see little Tim coming downstairs, older Tim going up the stairs. And so it's like, and you didn't know what was what. And so it, it kept you on your toes. I felt overall for me, it's a four to five. No, I agree. Definitely. First time watching this movie. Um, I didn't know what to expect from it. And like I said, from the get go, you're hooked in. Um, yeah. I like the, the dynamic between the two siblings, how they were always kind of counter each other until they realized that they can't, they have to be together and, and work as a team to defeat this, this thing. But yeah, the, the, the flashbacks, I, I love the flashbacks, how they worked well, how towards the end of the movie, like midway towards the end of the movie, you had that whole, like you were saying that it went from when they were adults to kids, adults to kids that you didn't know at what point were you actually watching during but you knew the whole time it was marisol you know playing tricks on them but yeah i mean definitely a storyline four out of five now what about the characters um all the characters number one i'm gonna go in order kaylee five out of five she's a bad bitch <laughs> so from the beginning to the end as a kid she was a baddie uh but to the very end she she just stuck as a strong character 
I hate that she unfortunately dies. Uh, they took out the big girl. Um, she's she definitely made the movie. I feel um, someone else made the movie. I feel was Mary Saul and yes. uh, the mother. I feel like every character besides Kaylee was a four out of five. But Tim, I'm sorry, my dude, you were a three out of five. <laughs> he was the weakest. He was. Uh, he could have been stronger, and it's it's sad to see that you know, Kaylee wears the pants in that relationship. Yeah, yeah definitely. No, for me, I agree. I, I mean, Kaylee, amazing, amazing. I mean, I'm I'm a fan of hers. I mean, I, I just I, I like her as an actress. I don't think she could do any wrong in anything she does. Yeah. Um. You said the mother was a strong character. I, I the father was strong in his minimal appearances because mm -hmm. every scene he was in, he he was captivating. He was intense. Yeah. And there was only one scene where he actually showed a little bit of humanity, I would say, is when Normal he tells, scene, yeah. yeah, he tells the kids I'm gonna go with a client golfing. Um, do me a favor the neighbor being brought to the door by the daughter. Yes, he was like, Oh yeah, she's you know, my wife's not feeling well and with the bloody hand <laughs> yeah turns around just looks up doesn't say nothing but yeah i mean the father was a strong character the, the, the mother yeah she's the tormented soul She's the one that's going through the mental, the physical. Poor I thing. mean, yes. And then yeah. Tim, God, I just, why? Why Tim? I just, it was so he annoying. Died. <laughs> he should have died. He should have just gotten hurt throughout the whole, mm -hmm. the whole thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, definitely, I agree. You know, Kelly's strongest, Tim's the weakest. Now, what's your overall rating of this movie? I know it's, you picked this, it, so it's definitely one of your favorites. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite. Um, not my top 10 or anything, but it's definitely a good favorite um, to fall asleep to as well. But uh, definitely four out of five. I think Tim is what kills it for me. And the ending. Oh, why him survive? Why end that way? I, maybe maybe I didn't see it, but why end that way? It, it's a replay of their childhood. Yeah. Now they're separated again. And... Nobody won but Mary Saul, and Mary Saul is definitely a four out of five character, aka the mirror, antique Lazarus glass. <laughs> so she she's a four. She she was even better than Tim. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fortunately. She, yeah. She up Tim. Yeah. I know, for me, I agree. A uh, four out of five. Um, cinematography beautiful. Good storyline. Good characters minus Tim. Um, <laughs> good moments where you do get a little cringy with the. Scene where he pulls out the nail, oh, uh, yeah. realizing he's doing yeah. that with her eating the light bulb. The worst germs are uh, your nails in your hands uh, or your uh, mouth. I'm sorry, your nails going into your mouth. And yeah, that part uh, was disgusting. Um, like I said, my biggest problem I had is you know, they, they kept showing the anchor over and over and over again. And I, I knew what was going to happen. And I don't like predictability in certain films. And when you're using the item yeah. or showing the item too many times, you know it's going to be a factor later and on honestly i didn't think it was going to kill anybody i thought the predictability was that the mirror was going to get smashed and then happy ending they win but no mary Saul wins yeah. uh nobody won except mary Saul. and it is nice like you said that the the villain wins this one yes yes this this one definitely deserved a villain winning except tim tim should have been <laughs> killed <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. sorry yeah. tim <laughs> yeah we're not against you we just just didn't like you right oh. sorry brenton the weights that's who placed him oh. Oh, yeah i mean this is good i'm glad you picked this movie i would have probably kept passing over it um but yeah this is actually a very good film to watch a uh, fun film um captivating and everything has a lot of good things a few bad things which you mentioned but yeah i mean if you want to watch oculus it's currently streaming on hulu mm -hmm. but also on freebie and tubi if you don't want any commercials, stick to Hulu. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good film. Definitely watch it. Definitely watch it. It's a Mike Flanagan film. If you're a fan of Mike Flanagan, he did Hush, which is one of my favorite. And Dr. Sleep. Yes, Dr. Sleep. Uh, very, very, very good director. Also, you know, Haunting of Hill House. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, so Lexi, it's my turn to pick our next film. Um, mm-hmm. Are you interested in what we're going to be reviewing next? I am excited, yes. <laughs> All right. I stumbled upon this film. It's a hidden gem. It's currently streaming on Amazon. I'm not going to go into too many details because I do want you to watch it. It is called Lavender. It is a psychological horror thriller and it's starring one of everybody's favorites, Justin Long. I mean, who doesn't like Justin Long? Yes, he's so cute. (laughs) He is very good in this film and I'm sure Lexi's going to like his role in this film. But yes, Lavender currently streaming on Amazon Prime. That's going to be next for our movie to review for What's Your Story? Any last shout outs, uh, Lexi? Interesting to hear Justin Long is in it. He's usually in romance movies. Um, he's in romance, and I don't like romance. I, if I watch romance, I'm going to have to watch a scary movie to get over it. <laughs> but, but with him, but with him that's bad. different. Oh, you feel yeah. bad when he's in horror, though. <laughs> it's going to be a nice uh, change, and I'm excited to see what he does. Um, yeah. And yeah. Final thoughts. Overall, great movie. Watch it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yes. See you next time. Cheers. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. And we have more coming your way on What's Your Story. This is JR with Lexi, The Fourth Corner. See you next time. We are out. Yes. Cheers. Peace.